John 14 and 12, Jesus said, Great works have I done, but greater works shall ye do. GWC Ministries is a family-oriented ministry designed to teach God's Word. We share simplistic, practical teachings on who God is, why you are here, and where you fit in His plan. Our mission is to empower you to go forth and perform great works. I'm excited because we're talking about reestablishing. And listen, ministry. I love that play on words. Yes. Amen. And listen, y'all women, I have I observe you all women having your women's months. And oh my goodness, y'all just be y'all just be putting on a whole nother level. <laughs> but listen, it's, it's May. It's May. It's May, and it says men is three. That men, the men are gonna come forth. Amen. And then I'm gonna tell you something, ain't nothing better uh -huh. than when you see men yes. going forth for God. Amen. I don't know. I, you know, don't you women? Don't you feel a little safer when some real men of God are around? Right? Because there's some other kind of men out there make you not feel so safe. Amen. But when you got some men of God around, you ought to feel a little safer. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do this, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna get out your way. Uh, but I'm excited. And I thank Pastor Razor for the opportunity and. The theme is, let me let me pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this house, this man of God, this woman of God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit rest upon this place. Send your blessings, O oh God. Send your mercy, O oh God. Send your favor and let this church continue to be a beacon of light in this area, O oh God. For the glory of Jesus Christ alone. Lord, word our mouths, O oh God. Hide us behind the cross. Let no flesh glory in your sight. And God, we decrease that you might increase and that we have you have your way today, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So the theme is reestablishing the authority of God in the earth. And the scripture text is coming from Matthew 18 and 18. And I just kind of tacked on. 19 to 20 to go along with it because I felt like it connected real good. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you got your Bibles, if not, I'm going to just read it for you right here. But I, I do got a couple of things I'd like to have you all do because I want this to be a little interactive. So if you got your Bibles, your phones, wherever you get your word at, it's going to be a couple of scriptures I want you to help me read. Amen? Amen. All right. So the first one is saying, Verily I say unto you, whatever whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And then it goes on to say, and again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth, touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, Somebody say, there am, I there am I in the midst of them. Amen. Reestablishing the authority of God in the earth. And I know uh, 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 Faith, Hope, and Cherry has been on the, uh, on the leading front of reminding men, reminding the people of God about the dominion, the dominion power that God has given. You know, it's important for us to know and be reminded that God gave us dominion. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And, and, and many times we don't have what we need to have is because we're not using the authority that was given to us. Uh -huh. Amen. A lot of times you can get it, but you got to know how to access it. Yeah. So, and, and so the ministry theme is talking about reestablishing the authority of God in earth. And I was happy. To, I told my wife, as I said, when Pastor Razor texted me and he told me this was the theme, I said, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Because one of the objectives, well, the main objective that God gave when we started our online ministry, yes, we, you know, we're empowering you to go forth and perform great works. But the main directive he gave me as a pastor of this, he says, I want you to introduce and reintroduce me to the world. All right. All right. Uh -huh. that's, that, that's the objective he gave me. Uh -huh. 
when we start, so they say, well, what is that his church all about? God said, I need you to introduce uh -huh. and, and reintroduce yeah. me to the world. And you know what I said, God? I said, I said, how, how do I reintroduce? Everybody know you. You would think. But see, every, a lot of people know of him, but they don't know him. And he says, I want you, I need somebody to introduce. And see, many times you'll get a facilitator. They'll get up and they'll start off. And when they put the speaker up, they'll say, we like to present to some and introduce to others. Uh -huh. That means some of the people in the crowd don't know who the person is. Oh, come on. So we're going to introduce him to you. Uh -huh. But then for those that present to others, uh -huh. those are the ones that already know about the speaker. Yeah. So we want to represent him to you. Uh -huh. So what I want to do today is I want to introduce to some uh -huh. And present to others God. So when now when we're establishing the authority of God in the earth, what does that really mean? All right, so now before something can be reestablished, it must have first been established. The definition of establish is to set up an organization, a system, or a set of rules built on a firm, permanent basis. Everybody say permanent basis. Permanent basis. Few other synonyms are initiate, form, and institute. So if something is established on a permanent basis, why then would one need to reestablish it again? I'm glad you asked that question. Because the definition of the verb reestablish means to establish again or make anew. Come on, come on. And listen, sometimes this little, this little two little word gets a bad rap, R-E. And people assume because you add R-E to something, it denotes it may not have been done right the first time. <laughs> That's not true, or oh, some mistakes were made. You know, it needs to be redone or needs a redo. For example, Sister Jones had to rebake her cake because it must not have tasted good. When in fact, it was quite the opposite. The cake was so good, the hospitality team asked her to rebake that same cake because we want to remind folks we have great cooks on our team. Um, and I got, I, got, I, got, I got to brag a little bit. I got to boast a little bit on the person that I know cooks good. Uh -huh. Listen, nobody's dressing uh -oh. Uh -oh. or a green bean casserole uh -huh. can, can be compared to my wife's uh -oh. dressing uh -oh. and green bean casserole. Uh -oh. And every Thanksgiving and Christmas, I ask her to remake these two dishes because I feel they, are, they have earned a permanent place on our holiday table. Everybody say permanent place. And y'all gonna find out why I keep having you say permanent place in a little bit. So now we talked about reestablishing authority. And the word authority means to have the power or right to give orders or enforce obedience of said orders also means the right to act in a specified way, uh -huh. delegated from one person or organization to another. Yeah. You know, Pastor Ray's and I have both had opportunities to officiate some weddings. And you know, and after all the vows have been said and the rings placed on the fingers, uh -huh. we declare a statement of authority. Yeah. And we say this, we say, by the power invested in me, given by God and the state of Illinois, I now pronounce you man and wife. And then we got the nerve to extend that authority a little bit further, and we gonna tell the bride and groom, Brother Charlie, you may now kiss your bride. Uh, don't, 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 don't get it twisted, Charlie. You can't kiss her uh -huh. until we tell you it's time. All right. Because of the authority that has been invested in us. It says here, Steve and Sandy Gibson 
EST. Established. March 23rd, 1991. Our union was established 31 years ago. And do you know what, Sister Michelle? Every year we celebrate it so we can reestablish what we established 31 years ago. And we put we had it put it had we had it put on this board because we wanted something permanent. We want a place on something permanent. So we designated our marriage permanent 31 years ago. Amen. So now, God and earth. Now everybody get Genesis 1 and 1 and you about know this by heart. But in case you don't. It says this. In the beginning, God. Stop. You're not going to go no further than that. Make it clear. In the beginning, God. That lets you know what started it all. So whatever they've been trying to push and tell you started it. Come on, come on, come on. Let me clear it up for you today with the word of God. Uh-huh. In the beginning, who? God. Now we can go on and talk about the next part. It says now created the heavens and the earth. Again, I'm going to make it clear, whatever they've been pushing you, how this earth came about, the word of God tells you right here, God created the heavens and the earth. So if he created it, he has authority over it. And then I'm, I, 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 y'all, y'all don't like that too much. Okay, I got one more for you. John 1 and 1. Uh It says, in the beginning was the word stop. Uh Uh The word was Jesus. That means the word was God. And the word was with God. So Jesus was there all alone. Permanent place. Uh He established, he was there when it all was established. And then we can go a little bit further and 1 Corinthians 10 and 26 can help us out too because it says, in case you don't know who the earth belongs to, I know we talk about climate and we want to be aware of the climate and everybody's talking about Earth Day and this is our earth. I just want to make it clear we understand who this earth belongs to because 1 Corinthians 10 and 26 says, the earth Is the Lord's stop. Uh Come on, come on, come on. It's his. We just found out when he he created it. So he wants to remind you it's his. And everything that dwells therein, Uh it belongs to him. So now I don't think it should be any more question about who owns him. And God being the sovereign creator Uh of the universe. Humankind, the stars of space, the owner of everything, the omnipotent, all-powerful one, the omniscient one, he's all-knowing, the omnipresent one who's everywhere at the same time, the God that said, let there be, and it was. This same God, everybody say, this same God who is the very personification of the word authority, who established and put everything in its permanent place. Permanent place. At his spoken word. You mean to tell me that this same God decides to create a man to reestablish this in the earth. Genesis the second chapter. The 19th and the 20th verse says this. It says God brought all the animals. The fowls of the air. 
that he created and he brought them to Adam. This is the part I like about it. Because we're talking about whatsoever you loose on earth is loose to heaven. What's about earth? He brought them to Adam. And the Bible says, and he sat back to see what Adam would call him. And, and, and look, and nowhere that I read, when Adam said, look, that thing said, moo, Adam said, cow. And we call the cow to this day, don't we? That sheep say, bye. Still a sheep to this day, isn't it? Chicken go cluck, cluck, cluck. Cluck, cluck, cluck. And we all love chicken. And it's still called chicken to this day. And nowhere did I read when Adam called it a horse, did God come back and say, no, Adam, I think you might want to find something different than horse. I don't think I really like horse too much. Try, try it again. He said, that's what you call it, Adam? That's what it is. Because I'm reestablishing my authority in the earth, and I'm using you to do it. That's why, ladies, I started out saying about the man first. Because the authority was first given to the man who then was supposed to disseminate it in the right way after that. Yeah, yeah. But God backed him up. Yeah. And whatever that thing he called it was, it was permanent. It was established in the garden, and it's that way to this day. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And, I, and listen, and I heard them say it today. They use the word declare and decree, which is great because, Missionary Wiley, that's in my message. So when he says that we're going to declare and decree, it means that's what he wants us to know today. He wanted Adam to know the same thing he wants us to know today, that whatsoever you declare, you decree, you speak, and agree, heaven is backing you up. Because heaven, in heaven, he will, we will have a will, God has a will for this earth and he needs us to perform it in the earth. That's why when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say, uh, give us this day our day. Uh, what does it say? Uh, Let thy will be done on as it is. Come on, say it again like you know it. Let thy, thy your will, Lord, be done in the, as it is done. That's what Jesus told his disciples to pray. And that's what he wants us to do today. He wants his will that's in heaven to be manifested down here in the earth. But he's going to and fro trying to find somebody who will carry that out for him. Who are not afraid to take the authority, the power that he has invested in them. And use it to bring about his will. You want to know what your job is? Reestablish God's authority. This world needs to know God is still in control. This world has forgotten this is God's world. I don't care what the politicians say. I don't care what. It's God's world. And the church is required. We have been deputized to fulfill his will in this earth. But I'm afraid we're too afraid. We're too scared. Covering our mouths up. Worrying about what's politically correct. Mm -hmm. Worrying about getting canceled. Mm -hmm. Worrying about getting censored. Uh -huh. But I'm here to tell you today, God tells me to do it, I'm doing it. I'm doing God it. tells me to say it, I'm saying, I'm saying it. Yes, sir. And I'll let him deal yeah. with those that try to come up against me. Uh -huh. Because my Bible tells me that no weapon yeah. formed against me yeah. shall prosper. Yeah. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. Yeah. Yeah. Rise up against me if you want to. Because uh -huh. you don't know who you're rising up against. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And then, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just about done. Let the Lord use it. So now, we know what our job is. So I know I, I, can, I, I can see your thoughts a little bit. You saying, Pastor Steve, 
Who is we? You know, we always say, who, who's, all this, who's all this we stuff you say? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this. We is us. Okay, Pastor Steve, I'm confused now. You said we is us. Now, who is us, Pastor? Well, us is our. Uh-oh. <laughs> Simple enough, right? Okay, say so I know you say okay now. Let me let me play this back. Who's on first? Who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> that little some of y'all I know that went. You see how Elder Ray's laugh? That that tells you me and his age, right? <laughs> so if we is us and us is our Wait, what did, okay, so how can we be us and us be our? We can get that answer in Genesis 1 and 26. Let me let the Bible answer that. It says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God basically testified that we got together and had a meeting. We, me, the word Jesus, and the spirit that moved across the face of the waters touched and agreed to let us make man in our own image. So that's how we became us and us became our. That sounds like more than one person, don't it? So what I want to encourage you today is you need to understand that when you're going through, when the devil is fighting you, come on, come on. and you think you by yourself, yeah. you need to understand a few pronouns. Yeah. A few pro look. Uh -huh. These pronouns. <laughs> understand a few programs that listen, when the devil fights, you got we, mm -hmm. you got us, <laughs> and you got our. Yeah. So you need to stop talking me and my and I and start saying, wait a minute, devil, you coming out the we? You trying to mess with us? Do you know what we'll do, what our will do to you? That's what you need to tell him. We got a team working with us. You not, not by yourself. And I'm going to get ready to tell you how you get we, us, and our to get on board with you. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited. I'm excited. Woo. Listen, see, listen. So now, men and women, when Jesus tells you in Matthew 18 and 18 that whatsoever you woman, whatsoever you man, shall bind, and another word for bind is forbid. I forbid you. Devil, I forbid you. You're trying to bring sickness, I forbid you. You're trying to take my child, I forbid you. You're trying to take my marriage, I forbid you. See, that's when we say, we all say, bind the devil, bind the devil, bind him, bind him up. <laughs> Had one lady used to call the church, she's binding everything. She called up and say, help me bind the squirrels, bind the possum, bind the, bind the birds, bind the squirrels. Bad and all that. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, if the devil messing with you, uh -huh. I'm I can help you there. Uh -huh. But I can't do nothing about all these animals. Yeah. You won't bind it up. So when the devil comes, come on, you come forbid on. him to do whatever it is he trying, and only you know what he's trying to do for you. And did you know, people of God, you don't have to accept it. I think that's the problem we have. That is the biggest deception that the church has tried to learn to live with. We think we have to accept whatever he throws at us. But the word is telling us today we can bind and forbid. And then it says, whatsoever you woman and whatsoever you man, loose. Everybody say loose. loose. And the word loose means to allow, to release, set free, 
In other words, you have the power invested in you to tell that thing to loose. I allow it to take place. Release. What's that thing the devil got you that's holding up? What's that thing in your life right now that's been held up? What, what is it? You know, you don't have to, that thing. You're waiting for the release. And Pastor Steve, it just ain't happened yet. I, I just want you to explore maybe this possibility. That the reason it hasn't happened yet is because you haven't released it. Come on, come on. The reason why it's still tied up is because you haven't loosed it. Yes. Listen, listen. Jesus told his disciples, he said, I want you to go into the city, another, going over to the other city. Mm -hmm. He said, and when you get over there, you're going to find a coat mm -hmm. tied up, which had never been written. Uh -huh. He said, now, when you get to the coat, fellas, I want you to go over there, and I want you to loosen it and let it go. Yeah. I want you to set it free. Uh -huh. I want you to release it. And then if, the, if anybody, if Jesus is so smart, because he, 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 he knows all of it. He said, now, if anybody comes over to you and asks you what you're doing, uh -huh. you tell them this, yeah. the master had need of it. Yeah. And when that they did that, they took the thing and walked away. Yes, they did. I want you to know faith, hope, and charity today. Uh -huh. Jesus said, go get that thing you want. Yeah. Tell it loosen and let it go. And if anybody asks you what you're doing, who gave you the right where do you get the authority? You tell them the Lord have need of it. Yeah. He gave me the authority. Right. He gave me the power. Yeah. And you got to let it go. Uh -huh. Let that house go. Yeah. Let that car go. Yeah. Let that job go. Yeah. Let that promotion go. Yeah. Let my healing go. I allow it and I release it in Jesus' name. Believers, when you decide to tap into the authority God has established at the foundation of the world, then you decided to reestablish God's authority in the earth and then connect to the fastest internet known as prayer and the power of the tongue. God's will is that people be saved. Y'all yeah. understand what his will is? Mm -hmm. I know y'all heard him say exercise his will. But pastor, I don't know what his will is. Mm -hmm. here's, a, some, here's some of the things his will, his will is that some people be saved. Mm -hmm. Be healed. Uh -huh. Delivered. Uh -huh. Be filled with his Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. His will mm -hmm. is for you to be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody say his will is for me to be blessed. Yeah. His will is so why the devil's trying to tell you you don't deserve to be blessed, you telling yourself you don't deserve to be blessed, you tell that rascal he's a liar because the very will of God yeah. is for me, let alone nobody, Come on. unworthy, Come on. me. Yeah. It's his will, it's his desire to bless me. I posted this on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. I was in prayer. I said, God, listen, I want your blessings mm -hmm. to stalk me yeah. like a lion yeah. stalks an antelope in the jungle. You know how you do that? Lion is like this. Uh -huh. He's laying, come he's come low. Come on, come on. The antelope don't even see him coming. Uh -huh. And it's out of nowhere. He pounces on him. God, I want your blessings yeah. to pounce on me. Because yeah. your word said, and all these blessings yeah. Yeah. shall come and over take me. Anybody in this house want some overtaking blessings? Not the ones you're looking for. The ones that show up, you don't know where it came from. That's what the authority of God in the earth can get you, Lenar. And listen, but he needs you to operate in this authority. Remember we said established, which means it's a permanent what? place. He needs us to reestablish that permanent thing he already put in place. Because make no mistake, what he established is not going nowhere. Now, make, now let's get it clear. 
if you do nothing at all, it's not going to stop it from being established. But now that other people can benefit from it, he needs you, he needs me to reestablish, to remind the people of what the power is they have. And that's what we ought to be doing, going around reminding people, you got authority. You got authority. And so listen, he told Peter, he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Oh, my goodness. That means what you decide, Peter. And see, in a little background, and that is, Jesus was letting the disciples know, when you all go picking fellas to be with you, whoever you decide, you decide. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to back you with whoever you decide. You say yes to this one, heaven is saying yes. You say no to that one, heaven is saying no. That's what, that's what it means right there. And, 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 and it's nothing like knowing that you got your supervisor, you got your manager, you got your pastor backing you up. Because sometimes you're a little uh, apprehensive, you're a little afraid. But see, sometimes you can just come in and say, pastor said, well, the manager said, the CEO said, but I'm going to share something with you as I get his mic back. Jesus is not even telling you you got to say that. You're going to take it up a notch. A lot of times, I know they say, well, Pastor Razor said do it. You tell you, 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 team leaders, ministry leaders, you trying to tell your folk what needs to be done on the ministry, and they give you a hard time. And so you got to tell them, well, look, I'm just telling what the pastor said. Uh -huh. You know, you throw it back on the pastor. Uh -huh. Well, pastor said, now you got a problem with that, you talk to the pastor. Because, you know, basically what you're trying to do is exonerate yourself of any, of any part, part of that. But see, Jesus is not saying do it because it's all, listen, if, if the pastor put you over the thing, he already gave you authority to do what you're going to do. So you don't need to keep reminding them what he said because what he said is what you ought to already be saying. So when you say it, it's just like he said it. And that's the authority he has given you. Walk in and say, well, did the pastor say that? I said it. I said what I said. That's how you get your, that's how you get your folk in line on your ministry. You got the authority. Listen, I don't need to tell my employees that my boss said to do this because my boss has already made me the manager. And I got all the FedEx. Listen. All the FedEx mm -hmm. backing me up. Mm -hmm. And I have personally been invited to sit with the CEO of FedEx Office of Print twice. Mm -hmm. I've been invited to talk with the COO of FedEx Office twice. Uh -huh. So now, listen, most times when I'm on a call with the other managers and my DM says, well, Steve said that FedEx is doing that, they typically don't question anymore because uh -huh. they already know. If he has been invited to get the ear of the CEO, uh -huh. how in the world are we going to doubt his power? Uh -huh. And that's all I'm trying to get you all to see today. God is backing you up. Yeah. They don't have to doubt your power uh -huh. because they already know who it's coming from. Yeah. And just know it's not coming from you. That's, that's, don't make the mistake of thinking it's you. But just know it's the power that's working in you. Uh -huh. I'm getting it from on high. Yeah. And this is what I want today. I want you all right now. I need two groups and I'm done. I want to, Pastor Ray said it's okay. I just want to, to get a few people that come to the altar. I need two groups. I need one group. Group one is called the buying group. Group two is going to be called the loose group. So now, if you have something in your life that you're trying to make the devil forbid happening, then I want you to come here and stand in the buying group. Now, if you got something that the devil has got and you need it released, you need it set free, I want you to come right here and stand in the loose group. Come on, come on. Anybody, any, anybody need to forbid the devil from doing something? Come on now, be honest. Because see, what we're doing right now is we're trying to get you operating in your authority now. Ain't no need to be doing all this talking about it and then don't get, see, I'm a trainer. And see, when we train, we teach you how to do it, 
we show you how to do it, and then we let you do it. So I want my loose group over here, and I want my bind group over here. Now, the other thing I want is, I need a few of y'all to be my two or three. Because see, the Bible says, where two or three I gather together in my name, I'm in the midst of them. So listen, if Sister Michelle is here and she needs something binded, I need two people to get with Michelle right now. Form a group over here. And all y'all, I want y'all to begin to pray together. Come on, all y'all. And if you need, and over here, come on. I believe everybody in the room can participate in this. Because if you believe in prayer, if you want to operate in the power of prayer, faith without works is dead. I want you to come, because over here, they need to allow something. It's some things in your life you need released. It might be your child. Somebody's brother, sister might be on drugs. Somebody's family member might be on alcohol. And you want them to be loose from that. You want them to be set free from that. You get the power to allow them to be loose today through the power of your word. And over here, you want something forbidden. The devil is trying to take from you. He is a taker. He's not a God is a giver. The devil is a taker. And if he took something from you, we taking it back today. Somebody say, I'm taking it back. It's not yours, devil. It belongs to me. Now, I want you just to begin to pray. Just begin to pray in the group. Begin to pray. I'm going to pray with you. All y'all just get in the circle and just pray. Over here, y'all praying that he loose. Praying that they loose what's going on in their life. That they can allow it. Come on, y'all help them. Look, it said two or three. It didn't mean it could only be two or three. Come on, y'all. Let's make a circle over here. Let's make a circle over here. That's it. And look, I'm glad some men came up because this is ministry. And the men ought to be the first partakers of the true fruit. Men, are, we have a dominion over our households. Men, we're the ones that are supposed to keep the devil out of our home. We're the covering over our wives, the covering over our children, the covering over our houses. The men need to be praying. Come on, this is your opportunity. This is your chance. Loosen, 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 loosen. Allow it, set it free. Come on, decree and declare it. Decree and declare it. Decree and declare it. I decree devil is mine. I decree devil, I forbid you to do it. I forbid you to take them. I forbid you to touch my body. I forbid you to touch my children. I forbid you to touch my money. Over here, we're releasing. Release that healing. Allow that healing. Allow that deliverance. Allow it. Set it free. Set it free at your tongue. At your tongue. At your tongue. Come on, come on. Let God, let heaven hear you. Let heaven hear us. Listen, because when you drink, when you gather together, two or three, Jesus gets a text. Jesus just got a text message saying that there's prayer going on. Jesus just got a text saying that somebody needs something bound. He got a text saying something needs to be loose. And he's obligated to come and join you and back you up. Yes, 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 yes. Decree and we declare. We decree and we declare. We decree and we declare. By the power. By the power. By the power. Investing in me. By the power that's given from heaven. By the power that comes from God. 
I will, I will exercise the authority. I will reestablish your authority. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. See in the spirit, the devil is the devil is being stopped. The devil is being stopped right now. What he tried to do, you just stopped him over here. What the devil tried to do, you just stopped him. You just stopped him. You just stopped the devil. Over here, in the spirit, it's released. Praise God. Come on, everybody, praise God. Praise Him for doing it. Praise Him for backing you up. Praise Him for working it out. Praise Him for blessing you. Praise Him for giving you the authority. We just, we just connected. Just connected to heaven's Wi-Fi. Lamar, we just connected to heaven's Wi-Fi. Right here, y'all just connected to heaven's Wi-Fi. That means y'all connected now. I heard the commercial say connected and protected. Over here, my loose group. Y'all just connected to heaven's Wi-Fi. And you're now connected, and you connected and protected. Now, you can return to your seats, knowing that that thing that you forbid is forbidden. That thing that you set free is free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Don't you feel lighter? Don't you feel lighter? Look at all these deputies in here. Look at all these deputies in the house. <laughs> Woo! We deputize all of y'all today. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Jesus. Yep, I'm done. God of heaven, we thank you, oh God, for your word. We thank you for your people. We thank you for the power that you have.